So this is a flap wheel. Uh, it's basically lots of bits of paper, sandpaper, to various grits. Now this is 80, same as the disc was, if it will reach. There we go. Oh, just about, same as the disc was on this. But I can go at this more gently now. I was as gentle as I could be over there with the uh, grinder, just touching it across, removing the scale, revealing the, the dents and dinks, and then tapping those out. But I'm pretty happy now with the way this is. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just concentrating on this side obviously, I'm going to give that a clean up. Not too aggressively, because this can really chew through, so you want to go nice and light. And away we go. Now I don't have good extraction, air extraction here. So what I wear, I'm looking for now, which I've managed to lose, is a mask. Here it is. Just fetches out all the bits of metal and dirt for me. It's vitally important really, you can really make yourself ill without this sort of thing. Now you can see here already how it's starting to change uh, the look of it. The thing to bear in mind with uh, any of these discs really, in the motion they're spinning and the motion you work, if that's going that way and I apply the work and roll it that way, although it's only an it seems like an insignificant amount of force, what that will do is it will have more of a polishing effect to the surface because I'm running with this, although this is moving a lot quicker have more of a polishing effect. If you want to remove something that's particularly stubborn, I would suggest not doing this on armour, but on other metalwork, you can lean into it and pull it back towards you, and then that is going against the flow of your disc, and it will gouge the work more. Um, be aware of that when you're armouring, and it's like I say, not a technique I would imagine you'd want to use, you rip the piece of armour and make it a lot thinner. But as you're just working it back and forth, so think of that, if you want to polish it, it's more on there and then off, and just skim it back and then in, skim it back, and it will do that for you. So I'm going to carry on fetching out these last bits across here. When you get to the edges, work that way, turn it around, work that way, and just blend the whole thing together. So, back to a bit of work, and we'll get this finished. So here we go, all done, uh, on a very gentle 80 grit. Um, you can see up close, possibly if I can catch it in light, there's a couple of little scratch marks here. Now, the thing to remember is, if you don't fetch the scratches out here, you won't get them out in the rest of the process. Again, look at original armour, uh, filled with scratches, but don't use it as an excuse for laziness. Get to learn where those scratches are, why they're there, and often they're on the peaks of bits like this, where they're trying to make this sharper, and difficult to reach bits like armpits and bends like that. So just have a think about what you've got. Because if you've got a scratch on the surface here, you will not remove it with polishing. There's a little one just above my thumb there, just above the shadow of my thumb. 
you might be able to catch in the light. I'm satisfied with that, to be honest. So, the next one I tend to use is a 120 grit. Uh, I prefer 150, but the supplier that I used to use for the 150 grit um, isn't there anymore. So I ended up using 120, and I've got to like it on small pieces like this, although I would prefer the gentler 150. Now, what I use for this is a think of Scovax. It's a paste that you paint on to linen mops, and it goes like this. And then after it's been used a few times, it goes like this. It's a lot gentler, but can have little sort of almost like stone bits poking up, which can gouge your work. So pay your money, you take your chance. But that's just a nice 120 grip. So we'll get that on, I'll give it a go over, and uh, then onto the grey col uh, polishing compound. So I went over that really gently with the 120. It just mats out the surface nicely. It doesn't remove too much. Now you can go through 180, 320, I think it's 400, and you can keep going like that and you can get a mirror finish on it, but it, you just don't see it on the armor really that much. So um, a few scratches and just a nice polish between the scratches. So I'll replace this now with, if I'm lucky, okay, with a gray, uh, compound mm -hmm. I'm just looking for my mop at the moment there it is so it's just a, a mop don't be lulled into a full sense of security as well keep your breathing apparatus on uh, whilst you do these uh, final stages if it's not chucking up muck from the polishing compound all of this stuff that is flying about so always keep your breathing stuff on, it's just really not worth risking your, your health. So what we have here is it's a, like a soap, um, it's a polishing compound, goes on the mop. And the ones I use are grey, white and blue, uh, very rarely for the blue. Uh, the white is just to finish off, most of the work is done with this one. You can get ones that cut and polish, um, I've just got used to using these, so you'd have to sort of look into that yourself. So what we do is we spin it up, apply a bit of the compound and then give it a polish. This bit can get quite hot, so sometimes I wear gloves, but because I'm only doing half of it, I should be okay. So just to save moving the camera about, that's that done, this is just the oily rag, it's just got some uh, sort of three and one, I like Swarfiga's duck oil, and you just give it a wipe down, you can see how it's picking up a bit of a shine, to be honest for a lot of kit that would do, I'm just going to do a bit of a white compound, because this is for a person who would be depicting a wealthier client. So I have separate mops, only a couple of pound each. And away we go.
So that's really your basics in polishing. Uh, what I've got left on there now is a bit of the compound, uh, the white compound that I was using, this one. So get a bit of 3-in-1, uh, which is a bit of elbow grease. Give it a little spray and just lift it off. And it fetches off the uh, compound quite nicely, quite quickly. Now you can keep going and going and going and you can get this up to a really high polish if you want. Um, but for most people's armour, just check that, there we go, for most folks armour, um, that's where they'll want to be. Um, the, increasingly it looks like it was sort of left like this, or done various treatments to it with linseed and so on. Um, but that's for a different video, if people want it polished and that's what they get. Uh, they get it polished. So those are the steps I use. I use the 80 grit grinder, 80 grit flap disc, nice and gently in both cases. Uh, a 120 to a 150 um, Scovax style uh, paste and then a couple of polishing uh, passes with the compounds and that lifts you up to a reasonable shine. You can go further and this at the moment is a bit greasy, you can see if I do something like that, possibly start to sit. But that's the oil that's on the surface. If you cut that back with a bit of um, auto sole or something like that, it really picks up a high shine. But the more you do that, the more you end up burning thumbprints and bits and pieces into it. So if you're going to go for that high polish, it is high maintenance. So just keep an oily rag. The simplest way of keeping it clean, I find, is to make yourself cut the linen bags, cotton pillowcases, store your armour inside those things and polish them with those rags, uh, with that bag and then gradually the bag goes like this and you have a nice oiled cloth that sits across your armour uh, all the time. So there you go, nice and straightforward, not too difficult. If you're going to paint the inside of the armour, which is what I should be doing with this one, I would recommend painting it um, after the first sort of 80 grits are done. Um, because then when the paint leaks through the various holes and it splashes over, the Scovax or the second uh, quick pass with the 80 will lift that um, for you and you won't be left with the paint streaks everywhere. Um, but if you're not going to paint it, you'll just crack on. So I hope you find that useful. I will put a link to the previous polishing one. Um, more or less going to have similar content, just with a, a couple of changes as I've learned to do things slightly differently as time's gone on. So uh, good luck and happy armoring.